five days, the world watched as they battled in the international. A tournament with a grand prize of one million dollars. All believed the tournament could change their lives. But only one team would emerge victorious. Now the teams gather again. A new city. A new arena. By one common feature. They are the best of the best. Who will emerge as the new champions? The battle begins. Championships Playoff 2012. We're live here in Seattle, but more specifically, the Benner Royal Hall, li home of the Seattle Symphony. But today, it's going to be home of Dota 2 and for the next three days. Valve have invited some of the best players and teams from all over the world. Some of them have managed to qualify, and they will compete for a whopping $1.6 million in prize money. But more importantly, the right to say that they are the best Dota 2 team. You'll be joining us in just a moment. You'll be seeing teams like LGD, I IG, returning champions, Na'Vi. You've got Complexity, EG from America, and of course, MTW and Mouse Sports from Europe. I'm James Sue Goodharding. I'll be your host at the desk here for the International. But don't worry, it's not just me. Joining me will, of course, be Brett Nebula Nebelin, um, also David Gods Parker, and Bruno the Statman. Welcome, guys. How are you doing today? Feeling fantastic, James. This is going to be an awesome event. We've been meeting the players, talking to a lot of the teams through the uh, through the last five or six days of the preliminary stages. They've all uh, little gotten a little nerve shook out here, but uh, as we go into the winners and losers bracket and the, the elimination stages begin today, uh, playing for big money, it's 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 a pretty big deal. Yeah, this is the real deal. We have come a long way. We've had three tough days of group stages. Now we're at the the main event. This is where everything counts, and there's no better place to be as a big, big Dota fan. Yeah, Valve have put on an amazing production here. Yeah? Look at this face. This is the face of a happy guy. <laughs> We're great. I mean, it's great having you here. I see all the people coming in. They're all excited. It'll be a great yeah, show. Yeah, they, they should be excited. This is a, just a huge event. I, I cannot express how important this is for all the players, all the teams here. It's not just the 1.6 million. It's, it's the chance to say, I am the best. I, you know, I have won. I have been crowned the champion of the international. And that's what they want to do. That's why they're here. We're going to have three days of games. But if you're not familiar with the international here in Seattle, it did happen last year as well over in Cologne, Germany, the first international. And the winners, of course, were Na'Vi. They are returning champions. But if you don't know what happened last year, here's a little recap video for you. back then to the desk and that was of course Na'Vi last year winning in Cologne Germany at Gamescom one million dollars they took home it was a fantastic tournament but it was also the first time Dota 2 was shown publicly we're now a year later and the competition is just so much more fierce yeah I mean last year there was maybe what five or six teams that a lot of people expected to do well this year coming in 16 teams probably 14 of which people had serious expectations that they could win this uh win this event but I mean when you're competing against the best of the best you really have to bring your a-game you have to be focused all the time you really got to be uh, on on cue like 
100 percent or you're not going to do it yeah and not just is the the competition tougher teams have had more time to prepare this has been an ongoing thing where last year it was a hyped up event but teams had a couple of weeks to prepare it was really introducing dota to the world this year everyone has been training for the last 12 months getting ready for this one event playing in their online competitions playing in various events but this is the one that counts yeah and also you have to know that last year we had 40 something heroes now we have a bigger pool of heroes People are getting excited, they have their favorites, they want to see what's going on, and they are expecting new and awesome things. Yeah, I, I'm just really excited to see, of course, some of the uh, some of the lineups that they're going to bring out. And I do believe, because uh, for those, those of you who haven't been following the international, we're in the playoff stage, which basically means we're going into a bracket. There is a loser and winner bracket, but the players have already been here in Seattle for about a week, and they've been playing group stages. Now... The interesting thing about the group stages before we go to them, which we'll do a little bit later, but it's worth saying that even though Na'Vi, like someone like returning champion, you know, they're, they're here to defend their title, haven't had the best group stage, it's, it also kind of says that I feel that some teams have been hiding their cards, so to speak. Some teams are definitely going to want to come out from this group stage, which is where they played a little bit earlier and come into the playoffs in such a, a bigger, better way. Yeah, I feel like the winner's bracket more so than the loser's side. I feel like if you're in the loser's bracket, there's got to be a level of, of fear for trying your, your, your crazy strategy. But in the winner's bracket, you've got, you got a little more leeway. You can lose a game or two. Uh, as long as you make a best of threes and you get the job done, you're going to be fine. Whereas the loser's bracket, I, I really fear. I, I want to see a lot more keeper with Tiny. I know we've seen a little bit of that going on. It's been fantastic. I've been so excited. But... Yeah, but of course, yeah, I, I'm looking for those sellers. But let's talk about the the, uh, the bracket here, the, the group stage uh, that we just had. Oh, that's that's gone now. Let's talk about the bracket. You saw the group <laughs> stage. I'm sure you've seen it online as well. Uh, but this is the loser bracket. Now, these games are going to be played at the end of today. And it's scary to be in the loser bracket. When you came out of the group stage and you and you and you, if you were in the bottom half like these teams are, you play a best of one. And if you lose in the loser bracket, you are out of the tournament. You're out of the running for the, you know, any prize money. So we've got CLG versus MTW, the first match up there. We've got Mouse Sports versus eHome. We've got Tong Fu versus M5. And we've got Dara versus Absolute Legends. Anything you want to say about these matches, guys? Yeah, for me, the first big, well, there's two or three really big cases there which really stand out. CLG, a team who went 6-0 in their group stage on the first day. Then the next two days, they went 0-8. and eight. They're going to really go in as somewhat underdogs here, despite finishing f fifth in their group. Uh, losing eight straight games is always going to be tough. The other big name for me is eHome, the returning runner-up from last year. Yep. They have come in, and they are now finding themselves in the loser bracket. Yeah, the loser bracket is just such a tough place to be because, like I mentioned, you really can't, you can't, you don't want to lose your entire tournament and lose a million dollars because, oh, we tried something gimmicky or we tried this crazy strategy. You end up losing, you go home and you're like, man, if we had just played our normal game, if we had just done what we usually do. But on the vice versa, if you just play your normal game, you're like, this was the big gun. We should have brought out everything we had, you know? Uh, so I feel like it's a balancing act. That loser's bracket, it's not a happy place. Oh, it's its going to be one of the most <laughs> exciting things at the end of the day because, you know, they sit down once. that They only get to play one hero, one best of one. Um, anything that stands out for you in the loser bracket there, uh, Bruno? We've got Tong Fu versus M5 and Dara versus Absolute Legends as well. Oh, well, they weren't the most expected to win teams when they come here, but they've been performing really well, even though they are in the loser's bracket. And I've talked to some of the guys, and they're going to try some different strats. And let's hope, let's just say we want to bring some of the lower win heroes to the higher end. <laughs> who who yeah. was this that said this? Oh, I can say. Oh, have two ways. oh I've got inside information too, Bruno. <laughs> That's what you want to come out with. Because uh, last night I was walking through the hotel, and actually I, I saw the MTW manager, and I said, oh, are you off to bed? He's like, no. I'm going to my hotel room to look at replays for my team. <laughs> yes. So that it's just so serious that yeah. the whole, not even the, f the five members that you'll see in the 5v5 Dota 2 game, but even the managers and, and the support around the team are getting involved, finding out information, and, and all those loser bracket matches are, are going to be great. I'm actually quite surprised, though, to see CLG there just off their first day. As you mentioned, they went 6-0, the strongest European team. Um, and then they went 0-8, and that CLG versus MTW game is going to be great. But also, we've got Mouse Sports versus eHome. Now, Mouse Sports, I, I think they finished off 2-12. and 12. Um, Rough times. They entertained. <laughs> um, As they always do. Yeah. As they do. Um, but unfortunately, going against eHome, what are their chances? I honestly think they're in it with a chance. Ehome have not been performing like that well. Ehome are a team who still, I mean, this is after three, four, five months of training, they don't seem to have their roles down pat. They're switching around from roles, drafts. They don't have a specific play style that seems to work for them. And that's something which may hurt them against Mouse Sports. 
All right. Well, uh, let's take a look then at the winner's bracket and see the guys who did well in the groups. Um, of course, you're going to see, I'm not surprised about, but of course, you've got the Americans in there, which I think a lot of people are really happy about. You've got Complexity and EG up there, but also the big story has been the first game that we will have today, which will be LGD versus Orange, because LGD have just been so dominant. They've got out of their group stage 14 and 0. That is just unheard of in professional Dota against the caliber of other teams here. So that's the first game in the winner's bracket, LGD versus Orange. Then we've got Complexity versus Zenith. Then we've got IG versus EG and DK finally versus Na'Vi. The, the games will be played in this order. Make sure you stick around and watch all of them. But back to you guys. Uh, anything that really stands out for you in there? Yeah, I mean, LGD going 14-0, as you mentioned, that's a huge deal. They look like world beaters right now. I mean, there's a potential. There's a potential to see a 23-0 international to uh, Dota World Champion, which I personally... You know, I want to see a little more interactivity, but if they crush it, uh, you gotta you gotta tip your cap, right? They're still a very young team. I don't yes. think they have it in them to go 23. No, they've got, they're bound to drop some games here and there. If anything, to me, IG has been the team who stood out as being probably one of the most yeah. unstoppable star-studded lineups, and they're going to be re a really tough team to beat. And then bottom of that winner bracket, we've got DK versus Navi, a rematch from last year at the WDC, and that's going to be a very exciting matchup. Yeah, I mean, the Chinese teams have really been a lot of the story through this preliminary stages. We've seen a lot of Chinese dominance. I mean, a, a lot of people expected that, but some people who have maybe only been following the European and, Nat and North American scene haven't really seen just the quality of these teams. They are really, really good. I remember watching during the, uh, the boot camp phases, watching IG play, watching a little bit of LGD and just being blown away with their individual skill. Yeah, and uh, Bruno, you've been checking all the stats because you are the stat man, I right? Am. You're not just here because of your good looks. Not no, only he is here that. Not only. There's also smart here. Um, well, history favors LGD, I have to say. They're 3-0 all this year. They've played twice, once at the winner's finals of the Gigabytes Dota Master 2012, and once again at the same tournament but on the group stage. And they pretty much dominated them. So, but let's not talk about history. Let's try to rewrite history, right? Orange is coming here, and we are all excited to see them now. So yeah. you're saying Gods is completely wrong and that the youth will play no factor at all and they're going to dominate 100%? Well, pretty much. Sorry, but Gods. You know the average age here uh, for you guys uh, at home, I think the average age of every team roughly is around 21 years yes. of age. Like, I can't imagine being 21 playing for a $1 million um, you know, prize uh, potentially for coming first. Do you think that's going to come into effect? Because the group stages was, was very comfortable for the teams. It really was. They were in the Valve office, um, you know, between playing Half-Life 3 and testing Half-Life 4 because they weren't Whoa. sure they wanted to release that. Um, they were just basically like, yeah, this is comfortable, this is good. But when it comes to the stage and there's, a, there's an audience of like 2,500 and every game is the most important game of your life, are they going to be able to handle it? Because we do have some older players here. We've got Malk. I do believe he's like uh, the second oldest here at 27. Yeah. <laughs> Like 72 now, um, <laughs> apparently. Um, but is it going to be a disadvantage? Because some of the Chinese teams are very young, even though we know that they have trained the hardest, I feel, for this event. I think the one important thing is that everyone has been so comfortable here, uh, playing the group stage at the Valve office. And now just being yeah. here, we have got these comfy player lines back, back, out back when you guys aren't allowed, of course. Uh, but it is just everyone in in a zone where they can play well and just execute as well as possible. Valve have made that possible. So I think the teams will be bringing their A game, even if they're a young team. Yeah, I couldn't imagine being 21 and playing for a million dollars. When I was 21, I was like, when am I eating next? And even then, I kind of failed oftentimes at that. Like, eating every day, sometimes that's difficult. Playing for a million dollars, are you kidding me? I, I'm surprised. You look like you'd be very good at eating. Oh, zing. No, uh, Valve, I, I agree with Gods, though. Valve, this entire week, um, what you really want to have at an international in a big event like this, you want to have all the players comfortable. You want them to play their yeah. best. You don't want to have any kind of distractions of like, oh, my God, where are we going? Uh, Valve has really done a superb job. Yeah. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, Nebula, you, you know, you're from the States. Can you tell us a little bit about, uh, about how Complexity and also EG are doing? Because I think they've surprised. I, well, I'll, I'll be honest. Me and uh, Lumi and I, rather, have lots of, watched a lot of Complexity games the last six months or so. And I think generally most of the guys at Dota Commentaries, uh, we've mostly agreed that Complexity are, are going to probably surprise a lot of people here. They play with a spectacular team style. 
And when you're when you're playing for this much money, it's not just about individual skill. It's how well you execute, how well you come together. I mean, God's was talking about e-home. They've been together forever, and it seems like despite their individual skill, they don't necessarily play up to that potential. Well, they haven't entirely been together forever. I mean, they're a team who actually disbanded, fell apart uh, following a couple Dota 2 tournaments in 2011. So if anything, they've been reformed just to play this tournament for a while. I mean, obviously, they've been competing for the last three or four months. But for them, this is what they've been building up to. This is the big tournament. And... It, it hasn't worked out for them so far. I mean, I have to agree, Complex are a team where it's all about the teamwork, the cohesiveness yes. between them. Um, back on EG, I feel, if anything, Complex is the team to look out for with the American teams. I agree. I really? Think, I well, think EG is one of those named teams. They're actually first game versus Zenith. Uh, complexity. Uh, how, yeah. do, how do you feel about that matchup? Because obviously, e even if, if you're in the winner's bracket and you win one game, you've actually qualified for $25,000 in prize money already. Um, that's pretty huge, but of course, no one's gonna wanna stop there, but it's, it's, they're playing you know, one best of three, potentially for $25,000. They've got a very tough first round matchup. If they can get through it, I think they'll be going very far in the tournament. They're a team who, have, who I think they're very emotional. If they lose that first matchup, they could find themselves in a loser bracket, maybe meeting up uh, with, with a tough opponent and find themselves suddenly knocked out of the turn without any prize money. So they need to get off to a good start, and then they'll go far. And yes. uh, anybody? Oh, sorry. Go on. I was going to say, yeah, Zenith are a really good team. And Complexity, I, I agree with God's Complexity is a team where if they win their first round, I think there's a good chance that they make it to the winning bracket. I wanted to go to Statman Bruno. Well, Statman Bruno, what Statman are you Statman Bruno, give us some stats on Complexity. The interesting thing about Complexity Zenith is that actually, Complexity is the team that plays the same heroes all the time. You know, Hannah Montana, Tidehunter, J.O., Nature's Prophet, and Zenith is the complete opposite. They like to try all these new picks, all different strats, and it's a clash of styles. It's quite a show match. Statman Bruno, I don't think that was a stat. It I'm is. be honest, that seemed more like an is it? analysis. It is. Oh. Mm, that seemed like Can we have a stat on someone from Complexity, like TC? Sure. <laughs> Just talk about it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Putting them on the spot there. He was that was expert analysis though, yeah. I gotta say. Yeah. I think Ehome are another team a lot like Zenith where very unpredictable in their picks and you never know what's gonna be coming and there's a few teams where it's it's a lot more straightforward what they're gonna like to go with. I think Ehome have had my favorite picks of this tournament. All Every right. time they pick Tiny, I'm I'm in, I'm a big fan. And of course guys, you know that the first game coming up here is gonna be L G D versus Orange Esports as it shows uh, behind us. We're actually just waiting on Statman Bruno, but he's gonna be way too late for this. <laughs> um, so <laughs> What we can do then, we can start talking about LGD versus RNG Sports. Um, the first match that's going to be up here on stage is going to be a best of three. It is, of course, a winner's bracket, but there are more games, obviously, afterwards. We've talked a little bit about them. We've got Cole versus Zenith and EG versus IG, but LGD versus RNG Sports, guys. Yeah, uh, LGD versus Orange Esports, to me, with Orange, they're an all-star Malaysian team. They're a very star-studded star -studded roster. I mean, you've got all basically these long-term players just I mean, built together around this one team. Yeah, and of course, the uh, what's coming up after that you just saw was Complexity versus Zenith, and then EG versus IG, and Na'Vi versus DK. All winners brackets, all best of threes. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm almost ready. I want to get going. I'm yeah. man. I have been antsy for a week, literally. I I'm ready to watch these. Just games. a week? I'm thinking like three, well, four months, yeah, maybe like I, since like the last international ended and know. they started adding more heroes. If like, you see me out of the business model, I'm anything but antsy. I think I'm mostly sleeping all day. I think it's generally my plan. But orange, uh, just taking a look at them, they have so much experience. They have so much like players that have been around a really long time. They're they're gonna be fun. Yep. All right, then. So uh, let's uh, meet the teams. And uh, I do believe we're going to have some interviews as well with the uh, teams. So uh, it's going to be LGD versus Orange. I'm pretty sure that actually we're going to have an interview from today uh, with LGD to see how they're feeling about going into this matchup. <laughs> Nama 比如说Orange战队他们是非常使用 
好的，那么作为首支嗯登场的中国战战队，有没有什么话对朋友或者说嗯在收看直播的中国粉丝说呢 ？How would they be like every segment and also every supporter? They will be doing the best they can. In a moment, we will be able to see your performance. Thank you. Just like the best interview ever, or was it uh, in Look, Chinese? I speak perfect Chinese. This guy, he has no confidence. He's over here telling me his team, they're not playing very well. They're probably going to hire a new captain between he, the next round. I, I think that was the wrong dialect. Uh, LGD, no, oh. they're going to stomp. Oh. Yeah, you're, you're I, I speak Cantonese. Western Chinese. Yeah, you, that, oh, okay. It was Mandarin. Um, all right, then, so that was LGD. Thanks, Anderson, for the interview. And, of course, that was Zhao Aid, the captain of LGD. But let's meet the rest of the team. Did he? Hula, Chala. DDC, Macau, China. Sara, Shanghai, China. Xiao Ba, Hunan, China. Yao, Hunan, China. All right, then that's the five members that make up the unstoppable so far LGD 14 and 0 in the group stages. That's so good. Yeah, well, LGD, you've got their captain, Zhao Wei. He generally plays their solo mid, their sideline solos. DDC, their secondary support player. Um, Sila, their main carry. Yao, their other solo player. And then Didi, their final support player. They're a team to look out for. They're a team who have yet to be beat. Can it happen? Are we going to see anyone take them down? I'm going to be honest. I think they're actually going to roll all the way through the winner's bracket. I think there's a good chance that L LGD, that I really do believe they have a shot at 23 now. I think it's a legit possibility. I mean, DDC, I know we haven't seen a whole lot of Enigma in this tournament, but he is one of the best support players in the world. Silar has been proving again and again through this entire tournament that there are few, if any, who can compete with him when it comes to farm. I mean, even the big names like Burning, uh, they've, they've struggled with Silar. I mean, Silar has really thrown it down. Yeah, and uh, Bruno, do you want to tell us a little bit about Siler or the team of Siler is just amazing. You have to look at him and see that he's 14 and 3 with Morphling. So you said I should ban Morphling, but then you look again and you see he's 8 and 2 with Silaver. And with 70% participation in the team skills, it means that he's everywhere. It's not these carries that just farm, farm yeah. for 40 minutes and then try and make an impact. But it's, it's great. Yeah, a lot of carries you'll see just, just AFK Rice for a really, really long time. Siler does that, but he TPs into every battle he gets in there when he needs to be, and that's really, really well, yeah. well done. Siler's been one of the best players to have on your fantasy team at Dota Academy. I had him, and I got lots of points. I wish I would speak you. of Bambo <laughs> from Mouse Sports. But yeah, LGD have been doing fantastic. All right then, guys, so uh, we've met LGD, and but we do, of course, have an interview with RNG Sports. I do believe it's Winter, so let's see what he's got to say about the international. Hi everyone, my name is Chan Lit Bin. Uh, my gamer name is Winter and I play for Team Orange Esport. I used to be a national chess player. I just graduated my uh, degree in hospitality from Taylor's University in Malaysia. So I can spend more time on Dota now this year. In chess, we are always taught how to think, think ahead of your opponent and try to predict what they are going to do. So it helps me a lot in the drafting phase. Uh. So I'm, I'll be very happy this year that I'm able to attend this tournament. Uh. I think for every Dota 2 player, professional player, this is their biggest dream to be able to attend this tournament. I would like to thank my parents for allowing me, for supporting me. And of course my girlfriend as well, she's been very supportive to me as well. Some of my, my Dota mates, their girlfriends, they tend to complain a lot that we are spending too much time on the computer. My girlfriend doesn't do that, so I really appreciate it a lot that she supports me. If I'm able to win the, the international this year, the first thing I do right after I win, I'll, I'll go back and propose to my girlfriend in Malaysia. Then that was winter, and yeah, I mean, no offense, uh, no girlfriend's gonna complain if you're playing Dota too much. If you're gonna enter a tournament to win 1.6 million, if I told that to my <laughs> girlfriend, she wouldn't believe me, and no, I'd still get a problem. No Dota players have yeah. girlfriends, that's a lie, but uh, yeah. <laughs> ah, orange, <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, let's meet the rest of the team then of uh, RNG Sports, and uh, of course, we've already met winter. Ice Joe Baru, Malaysia. Moshi, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Winter, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Extinct, 
Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Yamate, Johor Baru, Malaysia. So there you have it then. That makes all five of Orange Esports and really a standout player for me has been Yamate. Yeah, I mean, Yamate is certainly incredibly famous. He plays primarily the farming and the solo mid roles. He used to play for King Surf. He's a legend in the Dota scene. Everybody knows his name. Mushi, their, their captain, though, he's not their actual picker. He does a lot of the in-game captaincy. He, too, plays a little bit of farming and solo mid. Uh, purposely of Cyber Time. Winter, their side solo play, came from uh, MEFC, captain them as well. Uh, Extinct plays a little bit more of the jungle support role, and he is their actual in-game drafter. Uh, and then Ice, the the wonderful support player. Yeah, interesting for me is Mushi is one of those uh, few players who's actually played and trained in China. He competed with uh, CCM for a while. Uh, much like Chuan and IG, he's practiced and trained in these proper training conditions with the top teams in China. And I think that does give him a bit of an edge over some of the other players. All right, then, Statman Bruno, what can you tell us about this team? Oh, there's something interesting about Yamate. Uh, up to this tournament, he didn't play in Boca at all. Uh, but now he just played it five times in these 14 games. I have to say he's not been doing too well. He's one and four. But on the other hand, his Les Rack has sported lines such as 21, 6, and 17 with 563 GPM, which is a lot. Wow. I love it when you talk numbers. Oh. <laughs> I will keep doing that all week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that, that's a kind of put a little bit of focus on uh, where Orange Esports are right now. Um, obviously, they weren't in the, the same group as LGD because the group stages, they were in a separate group. So they haven't played them before. Yeah, uh, thank well you done. very much. I had that written down um, Did you? just to make sure I got it right. But what? how do you think they're going to approach this match versus LGD? Like, Because LGD, you say that they're just a unit of like five you know, really good Dota players and it's hard to shut down maybe, you know, one of their carries because you have to get through everyone else. But what do Orange need to focus on? Uh, well, to me, I think it's going to be always Yamata. I mean, like Bruno mentioned, I mean, his invoker, it's one and four, whether or not it's a hero he needs to stay away from or possibly just they need to maybe give him a bit more space, make sure he gets protected, make sure he doesn't get ganked too much. Uh, Yamata is the, the difference maker, generally speaking, and we're going to see whether or not he can get off to an early game start. I think the early game is the crucial point for Orange. Yeah, anytime Invoker gets rolling early on, you have a lot more success. So if, if they didn't really have a good time in those early phases, it makes it very difficult for the win. I mean, Orange have a lot of experience. They have been a really long time. Uh, they're not going to be they're not going to be afraid of LGD. I don't think they're going to be sitting there going, "Oh my God, LGD, they haven't lost a game." But I, I feel like generally, as long as you're focused, and again, they're playing for a million dollars, they're probably focused. As long as they're focused and they execute well, I think they can beat LGD, um, despite me saying I think LGD is going 23 and 0. Well, this is Orange who did 2-0 Na'Vi, so when yeah. you're taking down the returning champions without, I mean 2-0, without a loss, as that implies, I believe. Um, we're, we're, I think they're in it with this with a chance. 2-0 without a loss, it implies. Interesting. The implications are grand. Mm -hmm. I do mm -hmm. have the winning strat, uh, or actually the, what you should not do. You should not pick Enigma because LGD beat them 10 and 0, and you should not pick Beno, Monster, and Brew because they are 9 and 0 versus those two heroes. So don't pick them, guys. You are going to lose. This is this is. This are, is you, are you RNG Sports <laughs> secret manager? This is Have you maybe. got like a direct feed telling them what not to pick? Is there 10 percent in this one for you, Bruno? Yeah, is, this how you is this how you afford all your great suits? This is I might not tell that. This uh, is this is cheating. They haven't lost the game. Any hero that somebody's picked against them is on. Well, it's, it's been really interesting, actually. Some of the the heroes that haven't made it through almost at all in the, in the international. I, I, there's a good amount of heroes in there now. But uh, is there any heroes that you know, Bruno, that just haven't really been seen through the group stage much at all? Everyone wants to hear this name, but it's Techies. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, oh, Val, Val told me specifically Techies is never being released. It's true. Yeah, no, but speaking seriously, Nyx Assassin is one of the fan favorites that we hope yeah. to see during the playoffs. Uh, and if they do, it will be interesting. Uh, Darkseer hasn't made it through. Well, almost. <laughs> that's because <laughs> every game. That's because if you're giving away Darkseer, yeah. you're doing it wrong. That's and primarily why. I think he's the most banned hero, or is it... Um, I think Naga no, maybe No, that's, like, that's like and throw okay. with 100 bans or so. I don't have Out of like 100. About, about, about out of 115. Yeah. Uh, Darkseer gets banned a lot, like 80 something times. Uh, gets picked every other time. So, so it's how, really do, or, how do Orange it. ban versus LGD when they like, okay, we really don't want them to have a Morphling, and then, oh, he's pretty good at Lone Druid. 
So you got to so, ban those two, and then you also got to ban Dark Seer because you want to give him Dark Seer. Lycanthrope's really OP, so you can't give him that. Fearing's another hero. I think you have too many heroes to ban. I think it's yeah. a general yeah. problem. They need you need more yeah. fans to be yeah. LGD. Yeah, I want to yeah, see some undying like, picks. Where are the undying picks? I felt like coming into this tournament, undying was going to make a huge splash and was going to be a big deal. Uh, he's an impossible hero to dive. He's a big tank. He's wonderful in team fights. Tombstone has this incredible skill. But Undying has seen literally no play. Like, has he been picked at all? Like he has, right? I think he's been picked in one game by Dare. If maybe Bruno can check that for me quickly. Uh, but he's a he's a hero who is very yes. situational, only really using those aggressive early game push strategies, which is somewhat characteristic of teams like Dare and Five. So maybe we'll see him getting played. Uh, maybe a team will, especially in those best of one loser bracket matches, you can go for some sort of all in strategy, go for some fringe picks and try catch your opponents by surprise. Yeah, okay. And, uh, of course, we're just waiting on the players to get ready. They're going to be these big, giant pods where they'll be playing in front of uh, all you guys in the hall. So uh, thank you for joining us. And also thank you, everybody, for joining us at home. It is going to be three days of just the best Dota 2 you've ever seen. I can't, I can't say this is going to be the best you've ever seen on here. We have no responsibility for this, but I'm sure the games will be really, really good. But what we also have to look at is... LGD versus Orange, uh, the winner will actually go through, and we'll hopefully bring up the brackets again, just to remind you guys at home if you were, uh, um, the winner bracket, yeah, just to remind you guys at home if, uh, you know, where you are in the tournament, because the winner bracket is all the first games that we're going to be playing in order. Um, you're only going to get one game today from the winner bracket from the, the quarterfinals. So all the quarterfinals are played, semifinals are tomorrow, but it does mean that if Orange or LGD win, they're basically up against they know Cole, uh, Complexity or Zenith and then of course we've got IG versus EG, DK versus Navi right at the bottom and I think um, I'm not sure what's harder the top half of this bracket to the finals or the bottom half I mean what do you guys think because you've got LGD up there and on the other end you've got IG, you've got Navi, you've got DK as well which did do really well DK we haven't talked much about them but they, they went 11 and 3 in the group stage yeah, I don't. I don't think at any. I don't. I don't think anybody's sitting there thinking, "Man, I'm really happy with the teams we have to play. This is going to be an easy run to a million. Got to be a move, I guess, to get to <laughs> yeah. The million in fact, and, uh, as you were talking about Zenith, actually, Loda walked by and waved, and I had a little <laughs> bit of a nerd fanboy moment there. But I'll I'll try and contain myself. I mean, like. But, IG is an inf a phenomenal team. You don't want to play against them. LGD is a phenomenal team. You don't want to play against them. Navi are the returning champions. You don't want to play them either. However, if you want to win a million, you got to play them all. All right, then, guys, uh, just quickly, predictions before we go to the game. LGD, Orange, just say their names. LGD. LGD 2-1. Orange 2-1. So I'm, right. going, I'm going Orange Esports. I'm with Bruno. There I'm with go. Bruno. I'm the stat man. I'm safe. All right, then, guys, so it looks like we're ready to get this started. But before we do, please welcome here at the International Dota 2 Championships is the managing director of Valve, Gabe Newell. Welcome to the International. So I don't know about you guys, but I've been looking forward to this since about 10 minutes after I handed the Navi, Navi the check last year at the last International. And in the last year I played about a thousand more hours of Dota 2, and I still suck. But the cool thing is that we have the best players in the world here, and I get to have them watch me play and give me advice, which boils down to suck less. <laughs> so please join me in wishing all of the players good games, good luck, and hopefully they can have some fun. And let's play Dota. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the beautiful Benaroya Hall, home of the Seattle